Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and today it's gonna be one of those vlog days. I actually got a lot of stuff to do around the house, one of which is mail time. I got a lot of stuff in the mail recently that I wanna show you, and I am gonna be doing a review on it in the channel later on, but I did want to unbox it, show you guys. All right, this, this is heavy. So if you guys know what this is, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's called the Play Seat Challenge, and it's, let me open it up. If you guys know what it is, great. If you don't, let me show you guys. I sharpened my knife, so I could cut boxes now. Ooh, it looks so good. It looks so good. Let me grab this out of here. Ta-da! Look at this. This is a foldable, let me see if I can change that. It is a foldable seat, a racing chair for simulation, for VR. And I recently built a VR system with my son. And I'll show you the specs right now. Okay, so this computer that I built, and in most cases, I don't build nothing for a reason. This, this case was particularly chosen for this spot. And this is a Corsair 300. It's got some, uh, I don't know if you can see it. Nice decals in front, you might recognize that. But yeah, it's got a magnetic filter up in front, magnetic filter up on top and it's small enough to fit in this area of my shelf. Also, one of the biggest reasons is this. You see this? Most of the USBs, outputs, and all that stuff is always in front of the case. This one, particularly, is actually on the side, and it works for a perfect you know, slide-in shelf case. But in this guy, it's got a 750 watt non-modular power supply, uh, RX 570, eight gigs of RAM, for the graphic card. A Ryzen second generation, which we're gonna try to take care of today. We're probably gonna replace that today. Uh, second generation, 2600 and 16 gigs of RAM and M.2 in here somewhere. And yeah, it's hooked up to my VR system, which I'll be showing you guys in just a minute. And the whole purpose of this is to actually do racing simulation. But after building the computer and buying a VR set, you're kinda, you kind of need to recover from that before you, you decide to buy like a VR chair or steering wheel set and stuff because that costs a lot of money as well. So I ended up going for a play seat because the space that I'm in is my living room and this is a high traffic area. I don't want to leave a full standardized seat right here in the living room. And actually if I was to do that, it would have been cheaper because those chairs are only about like 100 to 120. This was 250. So just that alone, because it's collapsible, uh, I went for this because I could store it away in a closet somewhere. And again, I will be doing a full review on it probably in a couple of weeks after I fully use this and see the quirks about it. I'll let you know how that goes. But mainly it's because I'm able to put this away without having to, you know, go through my high traffic living room area. So yeah, that's one. I am gonna be setting this up in a minute. The next thing I got, all right. Oh my God, this thing's heavy as well. And if you guys wanna send me stuff, I actually have my PO box down in the description below. So yeah, it is there. I have companies send me stuff usually to my PO boxes as well. So I, I go in, pick up stuff all the time. All right, how do I get this out? Let me flip this upside down. And here we have it. Oh my God, this thing's heavy. The Logitech G29, steering wheel and pedal assembly. And there are two models that you go from, either the G29 or the G920. And I did a lot of research. Like again, I could have bought everything at one time a couple of months ago, but I was waiting and doing research. And I'm, I'm that type of person where if I want something, I'll hold off on it, hold off on it. And if I keep thinking about it and keep wanting it, I probably really want it. If I forgot about it in like a week or two, that's probably not something I wanted. It was just a splur of the moment thing. But. I've been doing a lot of research on this guy and between the G29 and the G920 steering wheel, this has a uglier look, but has more features, more buttons, the RPM meter um, has better switches, but on the G920, even though it's slightly expensive, more expensive, like $10 more expensive, and it says it's PC ready, uh, that one, uh, well, it also works with Xbox, this doesn't work with Xbox, but that one looks better but doesn't have all the functions that this one has. And eventually I hope to switch out the steering wheel because this is not a standard size steering wheel that you normally drive in a car. Uh, normally you would use a 14 inch steering wheel in a car. So I believe this might be like a 11 or 10 inch steering wheel. And so it's gonna feel small when you're driving and I wanna replace that. 
probably go on eBay and buy like a knockoff Momo steering wheel or something to replace this. Next up, this, another package. So I'm gonna open this up. Aha! This is the driving force shifter. I think it's for, made for the G29 or they call this the G29 and G920 driving force steering wheel. What's the part number of this thing? All this I'll leave in the description, in the bleh, bleh. Oh, I'll leave everything in the description below. So if you're interested in checking out what I got, also want to pick up your own, I'll leave it here. And also my VR set. There was three different types of sets that I could have went for at this time, but I chose the Vive because of the room tracking. Sensors up on each corner of the room and it tracks your head motion, your height, everything it tracks. While you have like Oculus where it's inside out, it uses cameras on board to track your surroundings and to see what you're trying to do. And I feel that with the room binding, there's actually more games available that could use this technology. I wanna hook this all up now and see how it plays. And then I, I really wanna test the VR system on the Uru Vault. So that's that's the thing I wanted to test. They say on their website that it's VR ready. So let's try that out in a bit. All right, I am back. Um, I just had to like figure out if I have to take it apart or not for the steering wheel, the bottom. But um, judging by the pictures that I saw online, you don't really have to. So uh, this is supposed to mount onto the bottom of this. And there are two screw holes. Like I said, I think it goes up to here, these two. And I might be able to get to it, but I do have to run the wire for the shifter first. And I got something cool for this. Now, normally what you would do is mount this, I guess, next to the steering wheel. So it would be like this close. There's like a mounting spot for it. So you kind of like, when you're driving a car or something like that, your shifter is gonna be like right next to your steering wheel, which is not natural because the shifter is always on the bottom right or the bottom left, depending on which side of the car you drive on. So, because um, there was actually some 3D printing uh, magic going on, I ended up 3D printing a uh, clamp. So let me show you guys that. So here we go. That's what I 3D printed. A little bummed out because um, I moved my 3D printer up to the top from where it was on the ground and I didn't align the bed. So there's no auto bed leveling. So when I moved it up there, I might have tweaked the little tiny screw right in the back a little and the bed was not perfectly level. So there was a little bit of warpage. Let me, let me take this off for a second and show you guys. Okay, so here it is the 3D print, and that's supposed to be able to clamp my shifter on there. And if you hear the washer and dryer, that's because I'm washing clothes. You see how it's a little warped at the end? I don't know if you could see. Uh, this piece seemed to be perfect. So I'm pretty happy about that. And I really didn't need support. I 3D printed support and it just came right off. So for future reference, if you guys are printing this particular piece you don't need support and I just wasted an hour okay this did this to this was a total time of six hours to print which or seven hours to print actually because I had to print these little tiny supports just to make sure that uh, the 40 degree angle edge right over here won't fall but it didn't need it so I used about 20% infill 80% uh, 80 millimeter per second travel and it, it came out really good other than this weird line that I'm getting right over man it's so hard to see in this lighting so now I need to find some bolts to kind of mount this guy onto my shifter and we should be good to go oh my god it fits so well okay so good news is uh play seat came with extra bolts and nuts actually four and I'm gonna be able to screw the two nuts into this guy on the bottom 
into the shifter assembly. So this is gonna be sturdy. Then I have two extra screws to uh, bolt on the steering wheel in the front and clamp in the back. So this thing is gonna be rock solid. And this is, I'm pretty excited. I can't wait to get this going. So let's put this in. I do have a really long screwdriver that I could do this with, but I'm too lazy to look for it. Oh man, tight. Well, not super tight. I still gotta do the top first and I don't wanna over tighten the bottom before I get the top in. I wanna move this as high as possible so it's closer to the edge. Tighten the top, tighten the bottom and slowly keep tightening each one until it doesn't wanna shift anymore. Oh, uh, you know what I could've put? Some rubber gasket in there, uh, foam. So it won't skid like what it's doing right now. Even though it's tight, you can do that. I might have to put some um, foam in there so when I tighten it up, it has a better grab to it. Chair feels very comfortable. Oh, the shifter is at a good spot. I mean, it still twists out when I need to go into fifth gear, which like I said, that foam piece would probably solve that problem. So I've managed to find some foam fitting. I don't know, let me see if I can capture this on camera, but this is a little kind of shield that I got somewhere. And it actually goes in there so perfectly. Look at that. So I'm gonna be able to use this to kind of like grip the bar so it doesn't slide. I'm gonna give that a try now. Folding it up was pretty easy and that's the entire footprint. It's actually really, really small once it folds up. Especially, um, it gives you all these ties that you gotta strap in and that's it. it. It was a two second, you fold it up like a zigzag or a cross, whatever you wanna call it. You just fold it up, tie the top strap on and yeah, it's heavy though. All right, so now it's day two of this VR seat play seat setup. I actually really love, love, love this setup right now. And I have everything all wrapped up. I bolted up everything. It also came with these uh, Velcro straps, like zip ties that I could wrap all the wires in. So the wires are ran really nice to this side of the seat because that's where it flips up. The cable for the steering wheel, the USB cable, ironically, it's very short but their power cable is pretty long. So you do need like USB extension cables to like kind of run into your computer. As far as the shifter goes, I did 3D print that piece and I thought I had that foam to make it tighter, but it still didn't work. When you're in fifth or reverse gear, you know, the ones that are uh, towards the right, it will still make it go down. So I ended up finding a box that perfectly fits underneath the shifter and it works perfectly fine. I mean, I think I will have to find a way to mount it better, but for now, that works really good. The seat folds up really nicely and it's very compact, almost like about 10 inch wide. So if you have a closet space that you can slide in about 10 inch wide, this should fit right in there. And the best of all is that you don't have to take apart any of the components, like nothing. You only have to loosen up the bolt for the steering wheel so it would be pointed down. And once it folds up, all the cables and all the plugs, outlets and all that stuff sits in the middle of the seat. It folds up like a biscuit, biscuit, no, taco. Folds up like a taco. And everything is kept in the same spot as it would be. If you were to play again, you could just tighten up the steering wheel to where you wanted to, uh, put the, pe um, the pedals to where you wanted to, and yeah, it's really good. So uh, I'm gonna be testing out one game, which is Assetto Corsa with this guy, and I'm gonna show you guys how it runs. And then we'll swap it out for the Udu and see how the Udu does. Because right now I'm actually downloading Assetto Corsa for my Udu and that's gonna take a little bit before it downloads. So let's jump into it. Look, it's tight. And if I put it into first gear, the car stalls. But eventually it will go. But if you know how to drive stick, you gotta ease into your clutch. Right, you gotta step into your clutch, get the gas up and then like kinda, that's how you would go. Where's my turbo? I don't hear no turbo sound. It's so realistic when you're playing it like this. Uh, also, the rumbles, because it's connected to an entire seat, you kind of feel the rumbles from the steering wheel also in the, also in the seat. 
I'm driving this car like I would drive my normal cars and shifting around like four or five thousand RPM. It does take a little bit used to with the VR in games like this because you're not used to the speed and your body's telling you like it should go this speed. Alright. I'm gonna try this same game on the Udu and see how that runs. Alright, I got it now. I'm gonna hook it up to a TV and see how that works. All right, this thing has been a nightmare. I just spent the last maybe two hours trying to fix it. Well, it's not broken. It's just, it's out of space. Did a Windows update. And I basically only have like two gigs left on the 32 gigabyte eMMC uh, storage on this guy. Uh, so I had to figure a way to remove all the Windows updates by using DISM. So I had to DISM my way out of it. So now I have enough free space, I'm installing Steam VR. That way I get the headset to work and then we could test out the game. But in the interim, I was actually able to play a set of Corsa in the regular 1080 mode. So that's a plus. So I'm pretty sure it should be able to play some VR. I will, we'll see in a second after I set up the room. <sighs> Tried to run Steam VR, it blue screen. Don't know what happened. And then it kicked me into the BIOS. So I'm hoping uh, it will still boot now. I don't know. <sighs> Uh, I hate to do this to you guys, but um, but I spent the better half of my entire morning to afternoon trying to sort this Udu Bolt out to get it to work with my Vive. So originally my problem was I didn't have enough space to install Steam VR, and it would not install to my separate SSD that I have installed. It has to be installed into the main drive. Okay, so I'm short by 5 gigs. I did a DISM, cleared it out. I was able to free up enough space to install Steam VR. Install Steam VR, and mind you, before it was installed, the HDMI pass-through was working on the visor, so I was able to, to able to see the desktop. But after I installed the drivers, now I get this error message saying that it can't detect the um, headset, and I'm stuck here. I spent a couple of hours trying to sort this out, and I think it might have had something to do with DISM and drivers. So. I'm um, narrowing it down to a point of that, but you know what? I might as well just install a bigger SSD, like an NVMe on here, reinstall Windows, reinstall everything, and try to get VR to work. But in all honesty, I was able to play Assetto Corsa on the actual you know, desktop mode, and it was playing pretty good. I think I was getting 30 plus frames, maybe 40 frames. In a VR setting, you probably need like 90 frames, but uh, I will have to see. I think it should be able to play VR, but it's gonna be another vlog or another video where I test this guy out. I, I spent too much time on this and I gotta get this video up. So uh, yeah, I didn't wanna leave you on that point, but things happen, you know, stuff like this happen. Anyway, if you guys like this video, please hit that like button. If you guys got any questions about this chair, which I will be reviewing or about Uru that I could try to help you figure out, let me know in the comments below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts. This video is gonna be a nightmare to edit. Two days of footage and I use two different cameras. It's gonna be a lot to edit. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed.